Hey everybody, it's Wendy with Crooked House Herbals and it's time for us to have another little session. Happy Thursday. It's 7 o'clock Central Standard Time and we are here with Earth Suit Maintenance number 9. Tune-up checklist for optimal summer health and fun. And I just realized that we have now been doing this for 10 weeks. Can you believe that? I can't hardly believe that. It's been fun for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. So before we get started, for those of you that may be joining us for the first time, uh, my name is Wendy Fargo. I am a master herbalist and an educator. I live in the center of the country, kind of down south in Arkansas, and I am here to talk to you tonight about tuning up for optimal summer health and fun. We have learned quite a few things over the past 10 weeks, and summertime is upon us. We are determined to have a good time, despite the perceived limitations and restrictions. I know I am. Um, and we've been learning a lot about how wonderfully designed our Earth suit is, and I think it's a good time for us to create a checklist and prepare for summer fun with confidence. Um, this is going to be important this summer, I think more than any other summer, because knowledge truly is power, and it's tricky when you don't really know what's true. I'll just put it that way. So, knowing about your body, hi Mandy, and knowing how it works and knowing what um, is good for it and isn't good for it is power. and you can disseminate that power not only to yourself but to your family and your loved ones and even your pets. So uh, we're going to incorporate some of the things that we've learned about, the herbs and things that we've learned about, and learn about a few new ones to add to the variety tonight. So let's get started. First, let's go over what we do know. All right. And by the way, if anybody has any trouble hearing me, please let me know um, because I have a tendency to just kind of ramble sometimes and I get softer and then you can't hear me. So just give me some kind of something that tells me to speak up, okay? Okay, what we do know. We know that viruses do not like heat. We also know that they do not live very long outside of a host. We also know that they do not stalk you. They're not waiting around the corner to jump into your face. They're not going to be absorbed through your shoes. And they don't come on you while you're sleeping. We know that wearing a mask on your face for extended periods of time is very unhealthy. It acts like a petri dish on your face. Think about that. And it also will limit your oxygen intake considerably up to like 25% I saw an article I'm thinking it was last night I'm not sure um, maybe last night or the night before three Chinese young men I would say early high school maybe uh, running on a track doing their athletics and they all had masks on of course and three of them um, drop dead. So that wasn't the coronavirus guys. That was running the track with a mask on. So you need to uh, use wisdom. Wearing a mask is not the law. It is, we have been told over and over now that we're being very selfish if we don't wear a mask in public and I'm not going to get into that discussion with you but I will say if someone asks me why I don't have a mask on it's not because I'm selfish it's because I don't want to get sick and if wearing wearing a mask on my face all day long is covering my face with bacteria and it's hot and you're sweating and you're you're just cooking germs and you're breathing them in so our bodies are designed to fight off stuff you know daily germs and daily things floating around I mean we have immune systems for that we don't need to be wearing masks that is something completely different and I honestly don't want to have any part of it so 
Um, that is your call. If you are elderly and you or have uh, maybe compromised immune systems in some way or you feel like you are exceptionally susceptible, then do what you feel is right. Wear the mask, but don't wear it for hours and hours and hours. And take it down when there's nobody around. You don't need to wear a mask kayaking, golfing, swimming, hiking, camping. You don't need a mask on. You do not need to wear a mask in your own house. You don't need to wear a mask in your car with your people <laughs> that you see every day. 100% in cotton masks, they breathe, but they're better for your armpits than they are for your face, okay? So use wisdom, guys. Come on, critical thinking here. Put the Connect the dots for yourself and understand that mask wearing is something else. It's not really even about what you think it is. So, like I said, if you feel like you are, if you're fearful and you feel like your body's not going to be able to handle it, put the mask on. But I'm telling you, if you stay in the house all the time, I've said this before, and if you wear that mask all the time, you are depleting your immune system rapidly because our body is designed to breathe deeply, to take in our surroundings and our environment, to process it, to eliminate what's trash, to use what's good, and it can't do that. It can't work right if you are compromising it with something over your face all the time. So, I know I'm probably gonna get some flack for that, but it's not, I don't mean it. I'm not digging at anybody. I'm just saying that it's not really fair on the other side of that for people to get ugly with people that don't have masks on and say you're being selfish and you're doing this because we're not we're just taking care of our own health and our own common sense says don't do that we can't live in a bubble if we live in a bubble we won't have an immune system so the coronavirus is a virus it's a flu and most when the flu is rampant, nobody's ever locked us down or made us wear a mask. And we've had some pretty serious flus in the last 10, 15 years. It, wasn't, it didn't even hit the news, much less lock us all down. And three times the people have died from the flu that have died from coronavirus, if you even know if that number's true. So, enough on that. But what I'm saying is for your summer fun, don't wear a mask while you're trying to be out swimming and camping and doing fun things. It's just, um, it's not necessary, okay? Breathe deep, have a good time, laugh. You're going to learn about that this session. Okay, so what else do we want to talk about? We know that vitamin C helps in eradicating viruses. Remember we talked about the power of pine needle tea. We know that copper is antiviral and can be used as a hand sanitizer if you are somewhere where you can't wash your hands or if you don't have any other type of sanitizer. It is antiviral, so it will sanitize, it will kill viruses, it will kill viral contaminants on contact, 99%. Um, we know that there are wonderful antiviral tinctures um, that can be taken to strengthen your immune system that that work against viruses. We also know that elderberry syrup and active immune tonic and those types of things boost your immunity. So they, they give your body extra tools to work with. We also know that zinc kills viruses. So we wanna incorporate some zinc power packed foods in our snacks and I, we don't need a lot, but we do need some because zinc is one of your friends when you're trying to keep your immune system high. And, um, you know, a lot of the over-the-counter cold remedies that have come and gone, the reason that they worked when they when they did is because they, their main ingredient was zinc. And you were like giving your body a mega dose of zinc and it popped. If it was a virus, which is usually what colds are, then it would kill it. Bam. So zinc is, don't forget zinc, okay? So now let's talk about, learn about a couple new things. 
you're going to think are very interesting. Did you know that we have a nerve in our body called the vagus nerve? And it is the longest nerve in our body. It, it is part of the autonomic nervous system. And it's one of the most important nerves in your body. I don't know how many of you may know about it. But it is a very cool thing to know about. And I actually, first time I really figured, I really had an experience with this was not with me, but it was with my daughter because she was having brain surgery and um, they kept going, you know, they would go to put the IVs in her and her vagus nerve um, is hypersensitive and it's, it detected something in her body and it slowed her heart rate down to the point where her heart would almost stop. So they had to abort the first attempt at her surgery until they figured out what was going on and that it wasn't her heart. It was, you know, and they ended up having to put a temporary pacemaker, like a little charger on her heart to get through the surgery because her heart kept wanting to stop because her vagal nerve kept saying, something's wrong, something's wrong, stop your heart, you know, slow down, slow down. So anyway, what we want to know about it is it helps to regulate many, many critical aspects of our physiology. So including our heart rate, um, our blood pressure, sweating, digestion, and even speaking. Okay, I've included some pretty good links in the documents about this so you can start your research on vagus nerve on your own. But I, I know that I've talked to somebody recently that um, kind of is similar to me in that we don't really sweat a lot. And you know, sweating is good for us. Sweating is our cooling mechanism in our body. And um, there are some ways you can stimulate your vagus nerve to actually get that kicked in a little better if, if you're not sweating like you think you should. Because it's good to sweat. That's how, you know, you need to. That's why antiperspirants aren't the answer. You, deodorant, yeah, if you, if you can use a natural deodorant to, so you don't smell like an old sock. But keeping yourself from perspiring is not healthy. So, um, there's also been some pretty good research um, that has been instigated uh, on treating on uh, treating fibromyalgia with your um, vagus nerve. So look into that. Also, migraines, hypertension, uh, weight loss, all of those things. They're they're finding more and more are connected. So here you have this giant nerve. It runs from your brain all the way through your face, your thorax, to your abdomen. It's a long nerve. And it's a mixed nerve. It contains parasympathetic fibers. Okay, so you've got two sensory things going on. And I'm not going to bore you with all of the medical stuff, but you can read about it. It is in your documents if you want to look into that further. But it's pretty cool. And it, it's, it goes through even like your voice box, your esophageal area, your pulmonary branches. It, it, it handles all of that. So I thought that was probably something that we need to know about and that maybe if there's a way for us to tune that up, we'll actually feel better and perform better. So it's named the vagus nerve because it wanders like a vagabond sending out sensory fibers from your brain stem into all your visceral organs all of them um, it's a cranial nerve so it's going to um, respond to like nervines and that kind of thing and also external um, stimulation like a um, like a, you know a nervine type thing would do. I, anyway, it it's a big giant long nerve. Okay. Um, new research has revealed that it also may be the missing link to treating chronic inflammation. So a lot of people that are suffering with that, um, this might be something you want to look into. Um, it's it's actually opening up a whole new field of science. And um, they're, they're looking at uh, it for things, you know, 
diseases that have been quote unquote uncurable. So I think it's cool how our body's all connected and you know eventually scientists get around to figuring all that out. So anyway, there are some some things that it does and let me just run them down real quick. It prevents in inflammation. Um, when it gets a signal for inflammation uh, the, or the presence of cytokines, which we've talked about, remember the cytokine storms with the viruses, or a substance called tumor necrosis factor, it alerts the brain and draws out anti-inflammatory neurotransmitters that regulate the body's immune response. So it's like um, a switch, like a train switcher, you know. Um, it helps you make memories. So um, there's some studies, some good university studies on this, but it showed that uh, one of them showed that stimulating your vagus nerve strengthened your memory, their memory, people who were in the study. The action released the neurotransmitters norep norepinephrine and into the amygdala where it consolidated memories. So what is that going to be helpful? That's going to be helpful for people that are having... Um, Alzheimer's onset, you know, type symptoms, memory issues, and it's something that's e easy to do, guys. Just wait till I get there. Okay, it also helps you breathe. The neurotransmitter acetylcholine, that's a big player here, um, is elicited, elicited by your vagus nerve, and it tells your lungs to breathe. It literally tells it that acetylcholine tells your lungs to breathe um, and it's one of the reasons that Botox is uh, you know it, which is something that you know a lot of times is used cosmetically but also some people have had it for like migraines and that kind of stuff but it can be potentially dangerous because it interrupts your acetylcholine production which is what tells your lungs to breathe okay so you can stimulate your vagus nerve though and by doing abdominal breathing and holding your breath for like four to eight counts just holding it like taking a super deep belly breath and holding it for eight counts and that like jump starts your vagus nerve so um it is intimately involved with your heart uh it's responsible for controlling your heart rate uh, it uses electrical impulses and it tells your all, uh, all your muscle tissue but especially your heart it's a, like a natural pacemaker okay um, it initiates your body's relaxation response so when you're ever vigilant <laughs> sympathetic nervous system revs up for fight or flight and you know I don't know about you guys but lately it doesn't take much for you to kind of get jacked up you know you just feel weird um, can't explain it and I don't think there really is an explanation for it but sometimes you just feel like you just get tense or you just get um, I don't know, jacked up is my word for it because it's I don't know our world is just not our world right now but what happens is when you get the fight or flight responses, it pours stress, it pours cortisol and adrenaline into your body. The vagus nerve tells your body to chill out, and it releases the acetylcholine. So that's the vagus nerve's job: is to balance that. Oh my God, I gotta get out of here, or I gotta punch someone in the face, or I gotta, you know, you know. Sometimes you just all of a sudden feel like you just need to slap a few people, and there's it's just building up but your vagus nerve if you can learn to stimulate your vagus nerve right then and you know like I said it could be just as something as easy as taking a deep breath and holding it for eight, eight counts that's one way you could do it um, you can get yourself back in check and get your nerve doing what it's supposed to be doing and before you know it you're okay again so a little bit of control is not a bad thing, right? Um, it translates between your gut and your brain. 
So your gut uses the nerve, the vagus nerve like a walkie-talkie to tell your brain how you're feeling. It uses electric impulses, of course. Uh, and your, so your gut feelings are very real. They are the messages that, you know, get sent to your brain. So you need to pay attention to that, okay? Just pay attention. Overstimulation of your vagus nerve is the most co common cause of fainting. And I've always wondered about that. It's like, how come some people faint all the time? You know, it's like, they faint. My dad, my dad used to faint. I mean, you couldn't even get him near a doctor's office or he'd pass out. He literally would pass out. When his own mother had to go to the doctor and he would take her and he'd sit outside in the waiting room. If he had to go into the room with her, he would pass out. Or it'd almost pass out. They'd have to get out before he dropped. So, what's up with that? Well, uh, some people have something called vagal syncope. Your body responding to stress overstimulates the vagus nerve, causing your blood pressure and your heart rate to drop. During your extreme syncope, blood flow is restricted to your brain and you lose consciousness. But most of the time, you just have to sit down or lie down and the symptoms will subside. That's usually what would happen with my dad. I'd just have to take him out of the room and sit him down. But it's, a, it's caused from um, a stress response, okay? And you literally cut the, uh, the blood flow to your brain off and it causes you to faint. So people that know that they have that, you know, that's their stress reaction to stress, then... Um, the best thing to do is learn how to breathe. <laughs> Just learn how to talk to that vagus nerve. How, and there's a few things we can do that, you know, just pick a couple and keep them in your toolbox. And if you are in a situation that you know normally stresses you out, and if you're a fainter, you know, you can overcome it. it, it, it you can do it. Um, here's something interesting. The electrical stimulation of the vagus nerve reduces inflammation and may inhibit it altogether. So there's some research and some work being done right now by several neurosurgeons and some other good doctors. Um, they're working on significantly reducing inflammation by stimulating your vagus nerve. Um, it's pretty interesting research if you guys are interested in looking into that. So, how can we stimulate our vagus nerve and tell our body what we want it to do? Um, here's, a, here's a little list, okay? Cold exposure. Acute cold exposure. By this I mean, and you know, some of you may know people that do the whole hydrotherapy, you know, stuff and they'll, they'll take a, a bath in ice water or they'll jump in Lake Michigan in the winter or they'll, you know, take cold showers or whatever but acute cold exposure it doesn't and not for a super long time but like a cold shower or um, even just you know if you have cold water like I have cold well water and if you take it the hose and just hose your body down especially if it's very hot and you then you kind of shock it with cold that stimulates your vagus nerve so again you don't have to do a lot of it you just you know just for a few minutes um, deep and slow breathing okay most people take about 10 to 15 breaths each minute taking about six breaths over the course of a minute is a great way to relieve stress so pretty much half of what you're normally doing you know slow your breathing down way down and uh, to about half so that you are breathing really deeply from your diaphragm and when you do this your stomach should expand outwards and then when you exhale push all the air out those of you that have done yoga or things like that you're probably familiar with this kind of breathing but this is excellent for stimulating your vagus nerve so cool says Tyler and I did hydrotherapy once in Carmel it is I like it but you you know you got to be ready for it uh, okay this is one I like 
singing, humming, chanting, and gargling. All of those things stimulate your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is connected to your vocal cords and the muscles in the back of your throat. So singing, humming, chanting, gargling can activate these muscles and stimulate your vagus nerve. And this has been shown to increase your heart rate variability and your vagal tone. I wish it included whistling because I whistle all the time. But I can, I can sing and hum and chant and gargle, you know, when you're taking your, drinking your apple cider vinegar. <laughs> Just gargle it a little bit first. Um, another thing that's good is probiotics. And, and improving your gut bacteria is going to improve your brain function. We know that because it affects your vagus nerve. Your gut talks to your vagus nerve. So keep your gut healthy. Get some good pro probiotics in you and, and stick with it. Okay? I, I like to drink kombucha. That's one of my, especially in the summer. And... I, there's a few foods that are pretty high in probiotics, so I usually try to get mine from foods and beverages um, and not take probiotics as much, but do whatever you can do. Do what works for you, okay? Uh, meditation. It's one of my favorite types of relaxation techniques. Um, that stimulates your vagus nerve and increases your vagal tone. It said, it said in the article I was reading that it shows that meditation or prayer increases vagal tone and positive emotions and promotes feelings of goodwill towards yourself. So it works on that parasympathetic, you know, fight or flight thing and it increases your vagal, vagal um, modulation, like it can, it, moves, it can move around faster. So I think one of the reasons that it's so effective is it's just causing you to be still and breathe deeply and um, tone, just tone that nerve. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids are another way that your body um, can tone, tune up your vagus nerve. Those fatty acids are not produced in our body. We can't produce them, so we have to get them from our food or take them. And fish is your best source of omega fatty acids, the threes, omega threes. So eat, eat a lot of fish, but I'm gonna say this, be careful where you get your fish. Try to stay away from Pacific. Try to stay more in the Atlantic, or you know, if you have your own spring fed pond, fish from that, or you know, something local, but uh, river fish, you know, that kind of thing. But Try to stay out of the Pacific Ocean for a while. It's pretty yucky for fish. Um, they've shown, uh, they've been shown to help people overcome addiction, repair a leaky brain, and even reverse cognitive decline. Omega threes. I didn't know that about addictions until I read this this week. So that's kind of encouraging for people that have addictions. But researchers have also discovered that omega-3 fatty acids increase vagal tone and vagal activity. So they're probably like the oil can, you know, oil can, and, and gre greasing up that lubricating. Um, so fish, okay, just make sure you are careful where you get it because there's a lot of heavy metals in the Pacific Ocean fish right now, a lot. Um, exercise. You probably knew that one was coming. And we've talked about exercise and how it promotes the hormones for your brain. It's good for your brain health. It's good for a lot of things, of course. But it's also shown to stimulate your vagus nerve, which may explain why it's beneficial to the brain. And um, it increases your oxygen intake. So your blood flows richer and you get more of those feel good hormones. So exercise is a win-win, guys. The only downside to exercising is if you haven't done it for a while, you're probably gonna be sore. <laughs> but just do enough to be a little bit sore, not to the point where you swear you're never gonna do that again, which I've been there a few times. Don't overdo it. 
but just find something that you like to do and do it. Do it a lot. You know, if it's swimming, if it's walking, if it's hiking, if it's all of the above, you know. Uh, I know that John Nichols loves to hike with his dogs. He's getting really good exercise and he's pretty consistent. He does it a lot. So find something that you like that, you know, feeds your soul at the same time, get your muscle tone going and your cardiovascular system happening and, you know, just do it. Ride your bike. Uh, I like, you know, I garden a lot. I love gardening, but it's also really good exercise, especially where I live. I live on top of a hill. Everything is up, down, up, down, over the rocks. So I, uh, I get a lot of exercise. And I ha climb a lot of stairs. So, another one is massage. Oh, I still wish that they would include massage in insurance. Don't you think that's one of the best things they could do? It's a preventative. It's one of the best things that they could offer. But it does stimulate your vagus nerve, and it increases your vagal activity and your vagal tone. Uh, some of the best places for you to target with massage is your feet, um, like reflexology. And um, also, that also um, plays into your fight or flight reflex responses as well. Interesting. So yeah, your feet and your um, sinus, um, your sinus cavities back here are some of the best ones to. So when you go to get a massage, you know, make sure you request that they they get back here in your sinus cavities and they get your the bottoms of your feet. Um, this is the best one, socializing and laughing. I've already discussed how socializing and laughing can reduce your body's stress hormones. It can actually boost your immune system. Laughter is truly one of the best medicines. If you can genuinely laugh for 30 minutes, your immune system goes through the roof. It's one of the best things. So being happy and laughing a lot and enjoying people is right off the bat boosting your immune system and stimulating your vagus nerve. Okay, so laughter has been shown to increase heart rate variability, improve your mood, and the vagus nerve stimulation often leads to laughter as a side effect. So as you're stimulating your vagus nerve, it makes you laugh more and it makes you happier. So. It's interesting. I challenge you to try, to just give it a try and pay attention to your vagus nerve. Okay? It's part of your tune-up checklist. Now, here's a couple summertime flowers that you can add to your um, toolbox as well. The first one is honeysuckle. Now, I don't know where you live in the country if you have honeysuckle right now, but right now where I live, it's everywhere. Everywhere. And... It's also called woodbine. Um, the flowers, the seeds, and the leaves are all used for medicine. It doesn't just taste good and smell pretty and give you a sinus headache, like it does me sometimes. But um, it's used for digestive orders, disorders. It's used for, um, for like pain and swelling and inflammation of your small intestine, dysentery, Upper respiratory tract infections, including colds, influenza, swine flu, and pneumonia. Hello. It's good for all of that stuff. Other viral and bacterial infections, swelling of the brain, like encephalitis, um, fever, boils, and sores. Honeysuckle is good for all of that. And it's yummy. Um, so it's also used for urinary disorders and headache, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, and even cancer. So, some people use it to promote sweating and they, they, if, you, if you do certain things with it, use certain parts of the plant, it can become a laxative. Um, they use it to counteract poisoning and some people in some areas even have used it for birth control. Not sure how well that works, but that was one of the things that was listed. It's sometimes applied to the skin for like, um, you know, skin issues and infl inflammatory issues and itching. Um, it kills germs. Honeysuckle kills germs. 
So add it to your hand sanitizer. Make a, a um, honeysuckle hydrosol and add it to your hand sanitizer because it's a germ killer. Or just, you know, make a strong tea of it and put it in a spray bottle. Um, it's got a lot of phytonutrients, a lot of phytonutrients and different compounds. So you can use all the plant. You don't need to use the root though. Don't pull it up by the root. Just cut some off. Don't kill it. Uh, let's see. Anti-inflammatory, respiratory benefits, antibacterial. Uh, it's an antiseptic. You can clean wounds with it. Uh, oh, and I even included a little antiseptic cleaning agent little recipe in the do in the documents that I gave you. It's antimicrobial, which means what? It means that it's going to fight off the microbes like cancer cancer cells and that kind of thing. Um, you can use it as an aromatherapy and that's going to enhance your respiratory, your mental state. Um, I love honeysuckle. It doesn't always like me, but I do love it. You can use it in your bath um, with some Epsom salts. Absorb it through your skin. You can make a healing steam with it. You can put it in a you know, um, diffuser. Uh, it's an antioxidant. So it's going to fight free radicals in your body. Um, prevents cancer and other serious illnesses ex exacerbated by toxins in your body. So it neutralizes toxins. So that's a good thing, right? If you've got some toxic stuff going on, honeysuckle to the rescue. Um, they're used as preservatives because they are antiviral and antibacterial pretty interesting. Um, one of the studies mentioned earlier also alluded to the benefits of honeysuckle oil, primarily due to the presence of alkaloids, flavonoids, phenols, steroids, terpenoids, and anti-cancer, anti-mutagenic, and antioxidant properties. So we have honeysuckle. Now, the other one that I want to tell you about is rose. Roses. My roses are also exploding. Actually, I sort of look like I live in the Amazon right now. We have had so much rain, everything's huge. The top of my willow tree has four feet of new growth in like a month. I kid you not. So it's, it, it, everything is huge out here and very prolific. But roses have been used in herbal medicine for centuries. And there's some things about roses that may surprise you. I mean, we all know that rose hips have a, a high amount of vitamin C. So the hip of the rose, we know. But the petals are mildly sedative. They're antiseptic. They're anti-inflammatory. And they're anti-parasitic. So they're an anti-parasite. Uh, they're also a mild laxative, a good support tonic for the heart, and a great and great for lowering cholesterol. So, they're, you know, that none of that's real romantic like we think of when we think of roses, but a lot of good medicine in those flowers. The antiseptic nature of rose petals makes them a wonderful treatment for wounds, bruises, rashes, and incisions. Rose water. I use rose water in my face creams. I use rose water in my nasal spray. Um, taken internally, their anti-inflammatory properties make them a wonderful treatment for sore throats or ulcers. They can stimulate your liver and increase your appetite if you need that. I don't need that. So if you have the flu, hello, Rose can also lower your body temperature and help bring down a fever or cool you off in the summer. It is a wonderful uh, body spray. Just rose water. Keep it in the fridge. And when you're really hot, you come and you spray yourself. And, you know, add the honeysuckle to it, and boy, you're going to feel great. Um, it's an antispasmodic. It helps relieve spasms in your respiratory system, like asthma and bad coughs. Uh, it's in the intestinal tract tract it, it relieves cramping it relieves constipation and it cramps in your muscles you know like from sports injuries 
Um, so who knew, right? It has a lot of flavonoids. It's got fruit sugars like fructose and glucose and maltose. Um, it has amino acids in it. It's got essential oils and um, it is a pretty powerful little flower. So those of you that have roses growing around or you have access to them, they've got vitamin A, vitamin B1, B2, B3, B6, B7, also known as niacin. So if you're niacin sensitive, you know, pay attention to that. Uh, folic acid, C, D, E, vitamin K, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, sodium, copper, iodine, chromium, nickel. And it's got tannins and enzymes all in roses. So, let me look at this. Alright, I got some good comments happening here. So, rose hips, I told you, have um, vitamin C. They also have vitamin A and B3 and D and E in them. Um, rose hips are nice. I, I used to make a syrup called rosy syrup, especially good for children because it was high in vitamin C. I haven't made any recently, but now that my roses are exploding again, maybe I'll make some more. So, it works as an antidepressant, an antispasmodic, an aphrodisiac. An astringent, a sedative, digestive stimulant, increases your bile production, so it's good for your liver. Cleansing, expectorant, antibacterial, antiviral, antiseptic, a kidney tonic, menstrual regulator, and an anti-inflammatory. So, let's think about this. Let's make our checklist. Alright, first thing on our checklist, we need to stay hydrated. Lots and lots and lots of distilled water. But try making it fun by adding some honeysuckle and some roses. Or maybe cucumbers and lemon. Um, but drink lots. Lots. Make a cooling rose petal spray. Um, keep that kind of stuff in your backpack. You know, when you're going hiking. It's even nice for the dogs and the, you know, animals as well. Exercise. Get outside, ride your bike, swim, hike, picnic, go to the beach, go for walks. Just move your body. Okay? Zinc. Pack zinc-rich snacks like pumpkin seeds and dark chocolate. Remember all those good yummy zinc things? Um, sanitizing. Make your own hand sanitizer. Uh, use aloe vera gel and a little honeysuckle and some alcohol and lemon juice or... Use raw apple cider vinegar if you don't want to use alcohol. All of those things make wonderful hand sanitizers. Um, take some copper. Keep some copper in a, you know, in a little bag in your in your hiking bag or wherever your beach bag or whatever, um, so you can rub your hands on it. I brought mine with me when I went to Nepal, and when we were out shopping and there was no water or no place to. You know, I would just rub my hands on my copper pendant and sanitize my hands. Such a fun trip. Um, stimulate your vagus nerve. So sing, socialize, interact, meditate, breathe deeply and slowly. Gargle. <laughs> hum. Get your probiotics. Eat some fish. Uh, take a plunge into the cold pool. And then take time to notice the difference. All right? When you do that stuff, stop and notice how you feel. Sleep. Get plenty of sleep. Restful, productive sleep. Allow yourself to turn your brain off and rest. That's probably one of the most difficult ones for a lot of us. Uh, boost your immune system daily. Take your Vital Living Elderberry Syrup or your Vital Lift Immune Tinctures. Or, um, I have two new ones that I'm going to talk about next week. I'm waiting for my labels to come in, and I'm super excited about them. One of them is called Not Today, and the other one's called Adaptoplex. And don't forget Pine Needle Tea. It's also really good. Add some honeysuckle to your Pine Needle Tea. Whoa, that sounds really good. So... This is your powerful summer checklist. 
get your entire family ready for some good times. It'll help keep your earth suit fortified and strong and you'll be confident and you will fight off viruses all by yourself automatically. Your body will just be in charge. Stimulate your vagus nerve. Keep your organs in balance. Drink lots of water. And have a really, really, really fun time because your body will be responding well. Don't live in fear. Don't wear a mask any more than you absolutely have to. If you have to wear it at work, you gotta wear it at work. There's nothing you can do. Well, at least not right now. But don't wear it around the house. Don't wear it in your car. Don't wear it to play golf. Don't wear it to play tennis. You know, don't. I think it's so silly that, you know, they have opened up the restaurants and they say you have to have a mask, but really, you have to put this mask on to get from the door to your booth. And as soon as they bring you your drink, the mask comes off and it doesn't ever go back on. Nobody wears their mask out of the restaurant. I didn't see anyone doing that. So it's really kind of silly in a lot of ways. They'll figure it out eventually. But in the meantime, just use wisdom and keep the petri dishes off your face as much as possible. So we are blessed with an adorable picture. I don't know if you can see it or not here. Wait, let's see if I can get it up here. From Amanda Pascal this week. She's got a little honeysuckle tea recipe. And um, I really hope that you guys have a really good week want to kick off summer in a good way and try to avoid paying too much attention to the dark clouds that hang around but if you are taking good care of your body and feeding it good stuff and keeping immune boosters in them and stimulating your vagus nerve sleeping drinking exercising meditating and praying laughing socializing humming gargling you're gonna be fine so I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope that you have a really blessed week. And let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. We are signing off for tonight. Blessings and bye-bye.